This illustration deals with transfer equipment rated as service equipment. Such equipment is defined in Article 100 of the NEC, but a, a great amount of information can be obtained by reviewing UL 1008. But uh, to start off, let's start uh, with the uh, generator. Uh, the rules are found in Article 445. But let's uh, review classifying the generator, which is uh, at the left of the generator in the illustration. Notice uh, an emergency generator in accordance with 700.2 informational note supplies certain loads for, it, uh, for the generator to be classified as an emergency generator. 701.2 informational note lists the loads a generator supplies to be classified a legally required standby generator. Uh, 702.2 informational note lists the loads that uh, an optional standby generator uh, would supply. And notice there's a big advantage uh, in the classification of your generator. For example, if the generator is classified an emergency generator, that means it's brought on uh, within 10 seconds, full power, uh, and also it has a 15-minute delay characteristic. Uh, if it's a 701.2 generator, then it could be brought on within 60 seconds uh, and have a 15-minute uh, delay characteristic to it. But notice if it's an emergency generator, 700.2, you can't mix the wiring with the general wiring of the facility. If it happened to be, though, classified a 701 generator, you, you could mix the wiring with the normal power, and you could do the very same if it was classified a 702 generator, which is, which is a optional standby generator. But notice if it's an optional standby generator, you can bring it on manually, bring it on automatically, design it to supply the loads that the user wishes to supply. So there's some advantages based upon the classification of your generator. Now notice uh, 445.13 uh, uh, basically states if you size the conductors from a generator at 115% 115, 115 excuse me, of the output of the generator, then the disconnecting means could be remotely from the generator located. But if you did not size the conductors at 115% of the output, then you would install a main at the generator if you want to take, say, a couple or two or three feeders maybe uh, off of the generator and supply uh, loads with it. Now notice the transfer switch uh, is uh, identified and classified as a three-pole or four-pole generator in accordance with 250.30 informational note one or two. Now basically uh, it's a three-pole generator if you do not switch the grounded neutral. In other words the neutral would be grounded uh, at the service and sort of speak back to the utilities in some cases. But if uh, you do not switch the grounded conductor or neutral conductor, the generator uh, is not required to be grounded. But if it happens to be a four pole switch in compliance with 250.30, informational one or two, uh, Notice that you would have to ground the generator then because you would be uh, working with the generator grounded uh, in compliance with what uh, it's supplied in some cases. Now the normal power uh, overhead uh, or underground for this type of service, you'd find it in 230.23a or 230.31a. The service equipment now, the disconnects and how they would be arranged, one main, uh, two to six mains, as in 230.70A through C, 230.71 and 230.72. Uh, 
Now, the NEC loop that is suggested to be reviewed here for that transfer switch is, is in the NEC loop, boxed in information, 700.5, if it's an emergency uh, uh, transfer switch, is it service equipment? Is it permitted to be service equipment? Or it's not. Uh, 701.5 for legally required. 702.5 for legally, uh, excuse me, optional standby type generator. And if you happen to uh, be into healthcare facilities, 517.31 A and B and 517.42 A and B, which is uh, reviewed, uh, I believe, in uh, volume two of the Stalkup's electrical design book. But this illustration uh, basically illustrates how to classify a generator and uh, the transfer equipment. Uh, is it uh, rated as service equipment or it's not rated as service equipment? Is it a three-pole transfer switch? Is it a four-pole transfer switch? Now, UL 1008 goes into more depth about the uh, transfer switch. Is it used as a uh, uh, service equipment and have it have to be rated and so forth. Uh, also, the UL 1008 would deal with the transfer switch if should it not be uh, a, a uh, rated as service equipment. You could also go on the UL uh, website, you, you know, just type in ul.org and uh, call up the uh, UL White Book for General Industrial. And uh, you could also read about these transfer switches uh, in that uh, electronic version of the OUL white book. Now, uh, with this in mind, uh, this is what figure 6-40 is illustrating uh, exactly what type of transfer switch do we have. Three-pole, four-pole, is it service equipment rated or is it not? and then the classification uh, of the generator, and, uh, and then the NEC loop that suggested sections that we should uh, review. That's what this figure 6-40 is illustrating.